Hello and welcome to today's preview show. I'm joined by BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple and here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at today's game against Brighton and we will canvass the thoughts of manager Eddie Howe ahead of the trip to the London Stadium. Let's start with today's game, the 2-0 defeat to Brighton. Chris, a disappointing end to the decade. Certainly was. Um, you know, an early goal like that is a, is a, a real sucker blow, particularly, I mean, Willow made a very good point in our BBC Radio Silent Commentary that when you're feeling tired and you're, you know, you've turned around quickly from a game a couple of days ago, the first goal is so important. If it goes against you, you feels, your legs can start to feel that a little bit heavier. And I thought Bournemouth took 20, 25 minutes to get going really today. Um, they had, you know, chances towards the end of the half, a couple of good counter-attacks, a couple of block shots, a um, couple of deflections, um, and started to get into their groove and probably half-time came at a bad time really um, for them. And then obviously the you know the second goal when that gets chalked off Dan Burns' effort chalked off a of VAR marginal call but you know had to be the right call given the uh, the rules as they are uh, you think that might then be a psychological boost back into the game but it didn't prove to be that way second half you know little bits and bobs but nothing really like the sort of cohesive attacking unit we've seen or we saw here last season anyway and um, it actually never really felt like they were going to get back in the game to me one positive was the return of Junior Stanislas though. Great to see him back. You know, he's had. I mean, he probably more than anybody else has had hardly any luck with injuries. You know, he's he's had things where he's come back and then gone down again quite quickly. And even in his recovery from this one, he had another problem, didn't he? And so that delayed his comeback. Great to see him back out there for for an hour. Um, you know, I, it totally took him a bit of time to get up to the pace of Premier League football again. Had a couple of nice moments, um, and he'll grow from that. It's great to have another body available and another option. And I think when you've got two games in three days, you have to have as many as many options to rotate positions as you can. Um, Jefferson Lerner obviously had a little bit of a problem today which is why he wasn't uh, wasn't out there and I think he was he's obviously a big miss when he doesn't play but yeah I think you know on a day of not that many positives I would say Junior's return was obviously one as you say. I mean the manager really does need a lucky charm at the moment because he's even said himself that this is the worst injury crisis he's known since he's been here. Yeah and someone like I mean Jack Stacey's only just come into the team and you see him limping off with 10 minutes to go as well where he bless him he tried to battle on you know obviously he wouldn't want to come off unless he had to and in the end you know it's almost just like waving the white flag and saying just get off because we can't have anything else going severely wrong with him and I think you know people talk about our oh, players should be able to play two games in three days well Jack Stacey's a fit young man and has only just come into the Premier League and I think there we just saw two you know physical games in three days is probably what's caused his problem I mean it was a it was a physically demanding game against Arsenal the other day he covered so much ground and I think literally your body these days they're so finely tuned put under such demands we probably just saw the result of that so let's hope fingers crossed that, that is only a, a sort of a short-term strain and that he's he's back available for the West Ham game particularly with Simon Francis obviously currently sidelined as well the right back uh, the right back supply is drying up as well as the left backs yeah. This is the fifth season in the Premier League, Chris, and we, we've seen sticky patches in, in the other four seasons, haven't we? And they've always come through. They have. Um, someone made a point to me earlier on that one thing Bournemouth haven't really done is had to face sort of the second half of the season right in a battle. Often they've sort of faded away towards the end of the season. It starts to have people peering over their shoulder. But actually they haven't had to really battle their way out of um, trouble in the second half of the season. So that's the concern, I think, is if, you know, the sort of negative feeling sees them end up, you know, they could quite easily be in the bottom three by the time we're reading it, by the time this is being aired. So, you know, it's, it's one of those situations now where need, things need to turn around before they end up in trouble and having to fight their way out of it rather than having that little bit of a buffer that they have usually had. So I think, the, that, of course, that's compounded by the injury situation, not just in trouble, but when you're looking for a spark or, a, you know, a couple of people to swap in and out of the team, they haven't got that many options. So. So the concern is that they haven't they've found themselves in a battle and having to really fight their way out of it. And obviously this performance today came on the back of a, an encouraging performance against Arsenal where we took the lead but we eventually paid back in the second half. Yeah, and I think that game, you know, with sort of what you say, the, the, full, the fuller strength team out that day, they certainly felt like the mojo was back and there was a bit more of the attacking swagger. It was probably a bit more of a the sort of old school, old school basketball game that we've spoken about before where it was a bit more end-to-end -end and um, probably a little bit too open at times. And I think, you know, when the... The Lerma and Billing partnership we've spoken about, which is solidifies the midfield and maybe they sacrifice a little bit going forward because of that. Um, obviously, the last two games, they've only played one of those two players uh, and it, it's sort of, you know, it's been a bit more open and they've, I mean, Aaron Moy ran the show for Brighton. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, I guess, a, a concern. But at the same time, it, the, the swagger is there if they can get all those players. I mean, Ryan Fraser, Callum Wilson came on late against Brighton with, you know, having to make an impact late on. I'm sure it's probably easier for them playing from the start trying to make an impact. 
with the encouraging signs of the Arsenal game, that is what we can take into the new decade and certainly these next five fixtures are absolutely crucial. Yeah, I mean, look at the results recently, the, you know, the, the run going back to the Man United win, the Chelsea win, the Arsenal point. Of course, everyone always says Bournemouth often do turn up in those big games, particularly at home, but actually it's some of the, you know, the, the more grind games, if you like, the ones away from home. Like, I mean, West Ham, the good thing about the West Ham game is they'll be under pressure because they're at home. Um, they've had a bad home record. They haven't won at home since September when, ironically, they beat Man United at home as well. Yeah, it's certainly it would need to be more of an Arsenal performance than the one we got here against Brighton. Let's turn our thoughts to the trip to London Stadium on New Year's Day and let's get the uh, opinion of manager Eddie Howe ahead of the visit to London Stadium. Yeah, no, games come thick and fast. We knew that at this time of year and yeah, we go to West Ham, which is going to be a, a difficult game for us. Um, away from home again, so we're going to have to regroup, uh, make sure the bodies are, are OK and go again. Just give us a word on their season so far, how you think they've done. Um, yeah, I think West Ham have, have, have done okay. I think um, it's a really competitive league this year. There's a lot of very good teams in it. Um, so we look forward. We had a good battle against them in the first game this season. It was a really tight draw. Could have gone either way. So we've got to make sure that we uh, certainly play better than we did in the second half here. Every season in the Premier League, you've had a, a sticky patch like this and always come out the other side. As obviously, that's what you're hoping to do this time round. Yeah, it is. I think the, probably the difference is this time that we're stretched probably more than we've ever been. And I thought we were stretched last year at this time in terms of numbers fit and available to us. But this is um, probably the worst I've ever known. And that's going to be the biggest challenge. It's one that we can overcome, but um, we're certainly going to need to be very strong and resilient in this moment. On that same theme, is there any positive team news ahead of the visit to the London Stadium? Um, it's difficult to give you that right this second, just counting the cost of today's game. So we we'll see where we are after this one. So there's the thoughts of manager Eddie Howe ahead of the New Year's Day trip to the London Stadium to face West Ham. Chris, West Ham, they're certainly in a sticky situation as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they started the season pretty well. They had a, uh, got a few wins on the board early on, but yeah, they've lost their way completely for some reason. Um, again, the pressure, they've never quite settled at the London Stadium, have they? That's been a well-known fact that it hasn't really been a, a home fortress for them. Um, you know, it's not a stadium you can generate a lot of atmosphere in. Of course, Bournemouth have good memories of, uh, of the game there last season. Um, Callum Wilson's sort of solo goal, which was uh, one of the standout moments of last season, very early on, first away game, of course, of last season as well. So, uh, and of course, Callum will have good memories because his last goal was against West Ham as well. So, way back in September, um, and I think you know, just before going on to West Ham more generally, one of the telling stats uh, of Bournemouth's recent, I guess, misfiring troubles is that strikers have contributed two goals in the last 14 games, going back to Callum's goal against West Ham last time round. Only Joshua King against Man United. That's the only goal strikers have contributed. So, I think. It's it's certainly time for Callum to, you know, we, we heard from him this week and he, you know, he said he does feel like he's getting chances and he's, uh, he, maybe he's been a little bit off it, but he feels like he's in a good place now. So, um, yeah, certainly the team needs Callum contributing, not just the goals, but back to the Callum Wilson that got him in the England picture. Um, but yeah, London Stadium, you know, strange place to watch football. The, the media position for us, our radio commentary and for you guys to watch from is miles away from the pitch. Um, so yeah, all in all, um, off the back of this, it needs to be a needs to be a pretty a, a pretty good performance. That's for sure. I mean, is it too early to say it's another six pointer, another must win game? I mean, you could argue today was a must win game and we didn't win, but you know we're talking we've got 18, 19, 18 games left. Yeah, I mean, Steve Cook uh, didn't he label this as a must win game against Brighton, and I sort of I'm of the opinion that it's very early for must win games, but a lovely to win. I think I call it but I mean we're getting to the stage now where as, as we referred to earlier on you don't want to find yourself too much in a battle that you're trying to get out of it's always better to be battling above it and to say let's not get dragged into that than be in it and say okay we've got to get ourselves out of it so yeah I think there's no doubt with how tight the bottom half of the table is and also with some of the teams below starting to pick up a bit of form as well you know Watford have suddenly found a couple of results uh, Norwich are a bit in and out could easily get a couple of results Villa the same Southampton obviously have sailed past uh, of Bournemouth as well so and all those teams are coming up so that's why this run is so important because you can as we've seen get on a losing run and find it very hard to snap out of so yeah this is a this is a huge period coming up to the end of February absolutely I think you know West Ham at the start of the season they spent a bit of money didn't they, they brought in the likes of Haller and you know they've got the likes of Antonio have always been great players and even Snodgrass who feels like he's been around for years um, you know other players you know even Chicharito and one or two others you know good players um, 
Obviously, Declan Rice has, you know, has, has had a great emergence as well. Um, West Ham certainly, I think, would have seen themselves challenging for the top eight rather than the bottom three or four as they are. So, but again, you know, look at look at the league table this year. Sheffield United. I mean, Wolves are absolutely flying at the moment. So there's so much competition for those places, and it is a case of sometimes, you know, falling on the the wrong or the right side of a very even even contest. So for West Ham, they're on a bad trot. I think it's two wins in 13. Um, you know, Bournemouth on almost equally as bad a shot to be honest with you um, so yeah it's a game that the football purists might not be looking forward to but certainly if Bournemouth can turn up massive pitch at London Stadium that's what I would say huge huge playing area which hopefully if Bournemouth players can recover from this this Christmas week and and be fit and firing they could exploit disappointing end today to what's been an absolutely momentous decade Chris you and I have lived breathed and eaten it all just give a short your thoughts on it certainly eat most of it that's for sure um, yeah of course it has been I mean even when you think back to the start of this year let alone the decade I mean it beating Chelsea 4-0 at home that, that was this year feels like an absolute eternity ago doesn't it but when we go back to you know the start of the year getting promoted against Bert, um, against Burton Eddie obviously leaving and coming back I mean that even feels like that was it last decade that was this decade um, yeah so much has happened obviously then the, the near miss in the playoffs the promotion from the championship you know will everyone will remember that Bolton Monday night you know as if it was yesterday and then you know since then the the roller coaster ride that is the Premier League for five years um, which you know fingers crossed will continue into the next decade or it will for at least half of this year um, and fingers crossed beyond that but yeah the one thing is as you know from covering this club for a lot longer than I have it's uh, you never quite know what's around the corner do you so there we are roll on 2020 and if you can't make the visit to London Stadium on New Year's Day don't forget to tune in to BBC Radio Solent and hear the thoughts of Chris and Willow. Thank you very much for joining us on the preview show.